Welcome to an introduction to differentials. In this lesson, we'll define differentials, determine the differentials of functions, use differentials to make approximations, and finally estimate propagated and relative error. So we know that dy dx is equal to f prime of x, where at a given value of x, this represents the slope of the tangent line, and therefore differential y represents the change of y along the tangent line, and differential x represents the change of x along the tangent line. If we were to solve this equation for differential y or dy, we'd multiply both sides of the equation by dx, and therefore we have differential y or dy equals f prime of x times dx, or differential x. More formally, let y equal f of x represent a function that is differentiable in an open interval containing x. The differential of x, or dx, is any non-zero real number. The differential of y or dy is, as we stated above, equal to f prime of x times dx. And because a tangent line can be viewed as a linear approximation or tangent line approximation to a function, we can use differentials to approximate function values. We can say delta y, the change of y of a function, is approximately equal to differential y, the change of y along a tangent line, which again is equal to f prime of x times dx. So the change in y of the function, delta y, is approximately equal to differential y, or f prime of x times dx, in most cases, as long as differential x, the change of x, is small. Let's look at this graphically. Let's consider this blue function and this red tangent line. Notice how here the point of tangency looks to be at x equals one, this point here. Notice how as long as we're close to x equals one, the y values of the red tangent line would be good approximations for the blue function values. If we enlarge the graph around this point, it would give us this graph here on the right. And let's say our goal was to estimate the function value given here by the second point. Notice how if we were to take the first function value here and add differential y, the change of y along the red tangent line, that function value would be approximately the same as f of x plus the true change of y, or delta y. This small vertical distance here would be the error, but notice how by using differential y, we can make an approximation for the function value given by the blue function. So we can say that differential y is approximately delta y, which means the change of y along the tangent line, differential y, is approximately the change of y of the original function, which is delta y. And dx equals delta x, because the change in x of the tangent line, differential x, is the same as the change of x of the function given by delta x. So this delta x here is the change of x for the function, but it's also the change of x along the tangent line, so delta x equals differential x. So as we mentioned earlier, differentials can be used to approximate function values. To make a function approximation, we can use this formula here, where f of the quantity x plus delta x would be approximately equal to f of x plus differential y, where x would be the point of tangency. So we'd evaluate the function of the point of tangency and then add differential y, where again differential y is equal to f prime of x times dx. So let's use differentials to estimate the square root of 16.4. The first thing we would do is to find the function we're going to use, and because we're trying to find a square root, we let our function f of x be equal to the square root of x, which equals x to the one half. Next, we're looking for a convenient value of x that's close to 16.4, and because 16 is a perfect square, we would let x equal 16, but because the true input is 16.4, differential x, which equals delta x, would be equal to positive 0 0.4. And therefore, f of the quantity 16 plus 0 0.4, which represents the square root of 16.4, would be approximately equal to f of 16 plus differential y, where differential y would be equal to f prime of 16 times delta x. So notice how in order to make this approximation, we need to determine f of 16 as well as differential y, which is f prime of 16 times dx. So let's go ahead and find differential y. Remember, differential y is equal to f prime of x times dx. 
So the derivative of x to the one-half would be one-half x raised to the power of negative one-half, and then we have times dx, which should be equal to one over two square root x times dx. So I'll need to find f sixteen, which should be equal to the square root of sixteen or four, and then we also need to determine differential y when x equals sixteen, so we'd have f prime of sixteen times dx, which equals one over two square root sixteen times dx, where dx is zero point four or four tenths. Well, four tenths simplifies to two fifths. So without a calculator, this simplifies again. We have a common factor of two. So this simplifies to one over Square root of sixteen is four, so we have one twentieth. So we have f of sixteen point four would be approximately equal to f of sixteen, which we know is four, plus differential y, which is one twentieth. So we have four and one twentieth, which would be four point zero five. One twentieth is equal to five hundredths. Now let's go ahead and compare our approximation to the value of square root 16.4 on the calculator. So the actual value of square root 16.4 from the calculator is 4.04969, which notice how is very close to our approximation of 4.05 using differentials. Let's look at the tangent line that we used in order to make this approximation. This red tangent line is a tangent line to f of x equals square root x at x equals sixteen, this point here. And notice how this line is a very good approximation for the function values near x equals sixteen, and that's why our approximation was so good. We can't even compare differential y to delta y at x equals sixteen point four because the tangent line is such a good approximation around x equals sixteen. Now let's look at two examples where we're given a function and asked to determine differential y. Example one, we're given y equals the quantity three x to the fourth plus two raised to the three halves, and asked to determine differential y. Let's first find the derivative function, and then write it in differential form. So dy dx is going to be equal to the derivative of the given function. Notice how we have to apply the chain rule, where the inner function would be three x to the fourth plus two. So if u is equal to three x to the fourth plus two, Notice how u prime or du dx would be twelve x to the third. So dy dx would be equal to, we'd multiply by three halves, we'd have three halves u to the three halves minus one, that's one half times u prime, which would be equal to three halves times the quantity three x to the fourth plus two to the one half times u prime, which is twelve x to the third. Notice here we can simplify the two and the twelve. There's one, two, and two, and six twos and twelve. So if this is dy dx, let's write this in differential form. We can say differential y is equal to, simplifying here, we'd have eighteen x to the third times the quantity three x to the fourth plus two to the one half times dx. So this would be differential y. Number two is a little bit different. We're given a function asked to determine dy when x equals four and dx equals zero point zero three. So again, let's first find our derivative. So dy dx is equal to the derivative of four x minus five raised to the third. Again, notice how we have to apply the chain rule, where u would be equal to four x minus five and u prime is equal to four. So we can think of this as u to the third and therefore the derivative would be three times u to the second times u prime, which would be three times the quantity four x minus five to the second times u prime, which is four, which means differential y is equal to, simplifying we'd have twelve times the quantity four x minus five to the second times dx. But now we're asked to evaluate this when x equals four, and dx equals zero point zero three. So we'd have dy equals twelve times four times four minus five squared times dx, which is zero point zero three. Let's go ahead and go to the calculator 
to get this value. So we have 12 times the quantity. This would be 16 minus 5, that's 11 squared times 0 0.03, which is 43.56. Now remember this value tells us the change of y along the tangent line from x equals 4 to x equals 4.03. Now let's talk about propagated error. If a measured value x is used to compute another value f of x, the difference of f of the quantity x plus delta x and f of x, which is delta y, is the propagated error. So the difference of these two function values is equal to delta y, which is the propagated error, but now we know that delta y is approximately differential y, and therefore we can use differential y to estimate the propagated error. Let's look at an example. The radius of a ball bearing is measured to be 0 0.8 inches. If the measurement is correct within 0 0.02 inches, estimate the propagated error. So again, to estimate the propagated error, we'll use, in this case, differential v. So the volume of a sphere is equal to four-thirds pi r cubed, and therefore to find differential v, we first find the derivative with respect to r, then multiply by differential r. Notice for the derivative here, we'd multiply by three, and then subtract one from the exponent, giving us four pi r squared. So differential v is equal to four pi r squared times differential r, and from the given information, we know r the radius is equal to 0 0.8 inches. And now, and because the measurement is correct within 0 0.02 inches, this means delta r or differential r would be equal to plus or minus 0 0.02. Notice how because it says within, it could be over or under by this amount. So our estimate for the propagated error, which is differential v, is going to be equal to four times pi times r squared or 0 0.8 squared times differential r, which is plus or minus 0 0.02. And now we'll go to the calculator. So we have four pi times 0.8 squared times, of course we won't enter the plus or minus, but we do include it in the answer. So 0 0.02, close parenthesis, enter. So the error is going to be approximately, so the estimate for our propagated error is going to be plus or minus let's say 0 0.1608. And because this represents the error in volume, this would be cubic inches. Now we'll finish by talking about relative error. The propagated error is given in relative terms if we compare differential v with v. So the ratio differential v divided by v is called the relative error in this situation. And let's go ahead and find this. This will give us a percent of error. So we have differential v divided by v, which in this case, differential v is four pi r squared times dr, or differential r, and the volume is four thirds pi r cubed. We want to evaluate this ratio when r is equal to 0 0.8 inches, and differential r is equal to plus or minus 0 0.02 inches. Before we perform the substitution, though, let's simplify this ratio. These fours would simplify to one. Pi over pi simplifies to one. Looking at the r's, notice how we have one more factor of r in the denominator. So r squared would simplify to one. r cubed would simplify to r to the first. So we have differential r divided by, our denominator is one-third r. But remember, dividing by one-third is equivalent to multiplying by the reciprocal. So multiplying by three over one, would give us three differential r divided by r. So the relative error in this situation would be three times plus or minus 0 0.02 divided by r, which is 0 0.8. And now we'll go back to the calculator one more time. Our numerator would be three times 0 0.02 and then divided by 0.8 which gives us 0 0.075, so plus or minus 0 0.075, converting to a percent would be plus or minus 7.5%. I hope you found this helpful.